The nickname is kind of perfect. If you support LGBTQ rights, you're not conservative. If you haven't completely rejected the party, you're problematic. If you're not pro-Trump, you're a traitor. Listen now, only on Audible. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein. With of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. Hey, tomorrow, our exclusive with Michael J. Fox, the latest on his fight to cure Parkinson's. And we just love what he had to say about his wife of over 30 years. Just listen Aww. to this. Tracy Pollock. She's, she's my best friend, and, and she's so sexy as hell. Come on, sexy. I okay. know. How about that? Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Plus, Spice Girl Melanie C will join us tomorrow to guest co-host. I still cannot believe that she got voted off Dancing with the Stars. That was ridiculous. Interesting. Right. Tragedy. Yeah, Interesting. Listen, we can see you on that. Happening now. More children are going to the emergency room because of mental health problems. I'm Stefania Jimenez. We're going to discuss what's behind that and where families can get help. In the age of face masks, growing a lipstick business is tough, but that isn't stopping one local entrepreneur. Coming up, how a local program is helping small business owners find success. We're halfway through the work week. The weekend's just around the corner, and we do have some changes to talk about. See you in a bit. News at 5 starts right now. At first and five, we have breaking news involving CPS Energy. Embattled president and CEO Paula Gold Williams will resign next year. Gold Williams has been facing months of scrutiny following the February winter storms. The outages that were part of that are Dylan Collier joins us live from the KSAT 12 newsroom with details. Dylan, a bit of a surprise today. Steve, the timing certainly was surprising. Gold Williams will step down in early 2022 with the public utility now fully entangled in controversy and struggling to pull out of a massive financial hole stemming from February's winter storm. Issues with CPS Energy really began to surface after that winter blast. Records show the utility was slow to buy natural gas and that leadership spent hours on arguably the most critical day of the storm, drafting a letter to try and boost support for Gold Williams. CPS Energy's entire senior legal team then resigned months later after clashing with Gold Williams. There were allegations that Gold Williams herself had also mistreated members of her senior leadership team. Her chief operating officer, Fred Bonniewell, was forced to resign resigned last week, just days after we exposed a prior ethics complaint against him and concerns with how he used a corporate credit card over several years. And then just the overall public opinion of the utility, its approval rating in back-to-back -back Bearfax KSAT San Antonio report polls was under 50% and not recovering, even though we are now eight months removed from that storm. CPS officials say Gold Williams will stay on while the board transitions to a new leader. She has led the agency since 2016. The utility still on the hook for $585 million in bills for the purchase of fuel and gas during a few days during that storm. And then there's that possible double digit rate hike looming in the not too distant future. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. Appreciate it. Uh, are you at all thinking that this was coming? Did you have any warning that this might happen? I had a feeling that this was going to be the next step, Steve, after we saw Fred Bonniewall resign last Friday. There are a lot of issues, some of which we have not even reported yet, that we're still gathering records on uh, that sort of tie her to some of the issues with Bonniewell even before he was promoted to chief operating officer. So uh, really not surprised. I am surprised that it was announced in a short press release late in the afternoon in the middle of the week uh, no kind of goodbye press conference anything of that nature sort of just a, a press release posted on the cps utility website it's interesting you bring that up dylan i had people inside cps energy tell me they were dismayed that it was made that right now and the timing and and all of that so yep. thanks for your reporting and we'll continue to follow this obviously dylan collier it is a crisis affecting our kids. A group of pediatric organizations declaring a national emergency in children's mental health. Our Stefania Jimenez joins us live to explain why this is happening and where you can get help. Yeah, so just think about everything that kids have been through this last year and a half because of the pandemic. They haven't been able to go to school. They haven't seen their friends. Many of them have lost loved ones. And so what that means is that a lot of kids are traumatized. That's having some health consequences. A number, a record number of children are showing up in emergency rooms across the country. And we're even seeing that problem play out right here in San Antonio. 
the isolation I feel like wears on kids. I'm going to come around. You want to come around? Sarah Keller gets it. The pandemic has affected all three of her kids. When we're isolated at home for long periods of time, my kids will be acting up. Experts say kids are depressed and anxious more than ever before. Uh, it's probably hard for them. You know, can't really make friends. That's why the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry are sounding the alarm. They declared children's mental health a national emergency. Their evidence? Skyrocketing emergency room visits it's from kids. The Centers for Disease Control says from March and October of last year, the percentage of ER visits for mental health emergencies among kids ages 5 to 11 went up by 24 percent. The CDC also says ER visits as a result of suspected suicide attempts among girls between the ages of 12 and 17 went up 50 percent. Tali Dalsh, CEO of the Jewish Family Service, says the numbers make sense. She says families around San Antonio are screaming for help. We have people calling counselors at the schools on the hour asking for these resources. They understand they're in, they're in crisis themselves. Um, they don't know where to go. So we are actually at five times the amount of counseling referrals as we've been last year in our school districts. Tolly's group is among the six nonprofits working with the San Antonio Mobile Mental Wellness Collaborative to provide mental health services in the area. The groups also work with local school districts. Tali hopes that more families ask for help. There are resources for anyone right now in need. It's just finding them, but also knowing that you are not alone in this process. All right, so let's talk about that right now. If you look at the numbers right there on your screen, those are the places where you can call right now to get help. From there, you'll be directed to the San Antonio Mobile Mental Wellness Collaborative. And of course, we also have those numbers on our website, ksat.com. Of course, experts are hoping that families will see this and get their children the help that they need because any mental health problems left untreated can also lead to more serious health problems like heart disease. I'm reporting live here. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Steph, stay with us. Before we, before we let you go, I want to officially welcome you to the KSAT 12 <laughs> News team and say I am very excited about you joining me at 10 o'clock starting next week. Definitely looking forward to that, Steve. I can't wait, and I can't wait to talk to everyone here in San Antonio. Stefania, we're very excited to have you. And again, bienvenida. Welcome to San Antonio. Gracias. Now to major news on the COVID-19 vaccine front. The White House unveiling a plan to get kids vaccinated. That plan announced in anticipation of the FDA authorizing Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11 as early as next week. The Biden administration saying they have secured enough vaccine supply for about 28 million children. They plan to offer the vaccine to kids at school and what co in community based sites. They're also launching a national public education campaign with pediatricians, schools and faith leaders. A trial date has been set for a man charged with murdering his wife. Andre McDonald will face a jury in court on November 8th. The Air Force major accused of killing his wife Andreen McDonald back in 2019. The case receiving national attention after Andreen was reported missing. For four months, the sheriff's office search teams and volunteers looked for Andreen. In July of 2019, her remains were found on private property in far north Bear County. The trial expected to begin this summer. Again, it was delayed because of COVID-19 in San Antonio. That forced in-person jury trials to be put on hold. If found guilty, McDonald is facing five to 99 years or life in prison. And we have new video of two suspects linked to a murder investigation. San Antonio police sharing this video on Twitter. They're asking for help identifying these two men that you see here. Police say they're connected to the October 11th murder of Javier Francisco Nava Mendoza. Nava Mendoza crashed into the front yard of a home in the 1600 block of Hermine Street after he was shot while driving. He later died at the hospital. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210 for stop. And we're still working to learn the name of a man who was hit while trying to cross a northwest side street last night. It happened in the 1900 block of Bandera Road near Loop 410. San Antonio police say the man was not using a crosswalk and was in, in a poor lit area when the driver hit him. The victim died at the hospital. The driver is not expected to face any charges. 
And October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and in effort to confront domestic violence within our own community, our KSAC community partners are taking action. We have a phone bank going on right now to answer questions you might have about domestic violence and put you in touch with local resources that can help. Steve Spreester is joined by Crystal Chandler, the executive director of Bear County Family Justice Center. Steve? Thank you, Alicia. And this is a unique opportunity here, a chance for domestic violence victims, survivors to call and reach out to the DA's office. Crystal Chandler, you're joining me now. Right. Talk about how unique this is and who should be calling right now. Well, I'm so grateful for having this opportunity. Who should be reaching out? Anyone who is experiencing violence uh, in the home, anyone that knows someone, because you have before you uh, three advocates with the DA's office with other, over 50 years of experience in this field and can talk about all the resources that are out there available to survivors. Sometimes it's scary for people to reach out to someone called the district, like the district attorney's office or the family justice center. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Don't be afraid. The people that work in this field are doing so because they want to help. And many people just don't know about all the resources that are available through the DA's office. You know, we talk about the Family Justice Center and that's because the lead agency at the Family Justice Center is the district attorney's office and it provides a number of resources to survivors for whatever their particular need is to help them leave that abusive relationship. Yeah, and I wanna be clear, these people want to hear from you. There's yes. no such thing as a bad question. Again, the phone bank is going until seven o'clock tonight. It's a unique opportunity to get any of your your questions answered 210-351-1363. Crystal Chandler, thank you for your time. Thank you. Let's go back to Alicia. And Steve, I'll take it from here, chat a little weather with y'all. The clouds definitely kept our temperatures down a little bit this afternoon, a high temperature of 81, but that's exactly average for the day today. Those this morning of 66 was well above average. Looking at the readings right now, we've got some 80s, we've got some 70s, upper 70s in the hill country, some 80s elsewhere, especially where we've had some sunshine. We do have a weather wild card to talk about that relates to rain chances. I'll see you in a bit. All right, it is time for the San Antonio Spurs, or almost time for the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, they tip off the 2021-2022 regular season tonight against the Orlando Magic. Yeah, a real opening night this year with fans. No superstars, though, at least not, not yet. yet left on the silver and black. Expectations are low with more on the first game of the season. Let's take you live to the AT&T Center. That's where we find our Greg Simmons. Greg. Hey, guys, I tell you what, if you're coming to the game tonight, the best idea would be to purchase a program because there are as many as seven new faces on the roster this year, including one in the starting lineup. That's because there's no longer DeMar DeRozan, Patty Mills, or even Rudy Gay. Now it's Jock Landell, Joshua Primo, Doug McDermott, who, by the way, is expected to be in tonight's starting lineup. A roster of young guys led by DeJounte Murray and Derek White this season, where the Spurs are predicted to win only 30 games, which more than likely would keep them out of the postseason for a franchise record third straight year. But by picking up the tempo of their game, the Spurs hope to surprise some folks. Opening day is always exciting. I mean, especially to have the crowd back, the fans back. Um, I know everybody's looking forward to it. Um, chance to show what we, what we are and um, get off on the right step. Everybody's really excited to, to get going, have the season start back up. Um, fans in, in the building just makes everything a whole lot better. So um, we're looking forward to getting out there and, and putting on a show for them. All right, let's hope so. Now, unlike last season where the COVID pandemic, by the way, limited the season to 72 games, this will be a full 82-game schedule starting tonight. We'll have more coming up live in sports. Live from the AT&T Center, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Cannot wait. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back after the break. All right, talk about a challenge trying to grow a new lipstick business when people are wearing masks or staying home. Well, it's a speed bump one local woman ran into. Now she's getting some help. Her business is one of 10 chosen for the Maestro Center's Embracing Entrepreneurial Equity Program. During the next several weeks, they're getting all kinds of small business guidance. And some of the business owners, they, they get stuck and they don't grow because they don't have access to a line of credit, right? They don't know that that's available and that's an opportunity for them. 
12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz talks to the lady behind the lipstick business who's hoping this opportunity will get the kiss of success. It's hard to imagine Darinette Curtis grew up a tomboy. Um, and then something clicked to just be a girly girl. Now this grown up girly girl has a beauty business named for what her daddy called her love muffin and inspired by her mom and the lipstick she wore for 25 years. It cherry jubilee. I can't remember. I think it's Avon. It might be that Avon. Yes, Avon. but it's cherry jubilee. <laughs> Now this is Curtis's Pucker Up palette and portfolio, a line of liquid lip colors like Lollipop and Licorice, Honey Bun and Sip of Bordeaux. I have a weakness for sweets, that's why. <laughs> she got her start six years ago using online tutorials to mix pigments. She came up with a vegan matte lip color that's smudge proof. Now she sells online to her customers. So that could be someone who's on the go. That could be someone who just wants to look nice running to the store. It could be somebody who wants to slay the day away and into the night. Curtis is slaying it despite challenges like funding, but she's passionate about a business she sees as more than cosmetic. You know, you could change someone's day just because you feel just a little bit prettier walking out the door. She hopes to expand her line, find space on retail shelves, and be a brand on everybody's lips, including her mom's. This shade's for her, Cherry Granita. I really just want to walk down the street and know that someone's wearing my lipstick. They don't have to know who I am, but the fact that they love my lipstick is enough for me. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, the colors look great. A success story. All right, live cam outside right now, 81 degrees, and there were times today where it felt like it was going to rain. It looked like cloudy, it. Cloudy, cloudy. Looked like it, but uh, no, we didn't quite have the rain-making clouds overhead. And there is a bit of a weather wild card in our days ahead, which have to do with uh, our rain chances as we get on into the early part of next week. Overall, though, increasing humidity in the days ahead. We also have above average temperatures that are going to be in place for several days. So let's talk about it. Taking a look outside, nice time lapse here from our camera. And you see some layered clouds again, low clouds, a little closer to us in the frame there and some high clouds streaming above 81 degrees dew point of 67. That's even higher than yesterday. So the humidity, hey, it's back. You know, some people love it. Some people don't. It's here to stay at least for the foreseeable future. And actually, it's likely to rise a little bit as we get into the weekend. Dew points closer to that oppressive level by Sunday and Monday. Oppressive when it comes to that sticky, muggy feeling out there. Temperature wise right now across the state, not a huge difference until you get up into the northern panhandle. Amarillo at 70, Lubbock at 78 degrees, Midland 85, 86 Houston. Laredo is one of the exceptions at 90, Carrizo Springs at 91. Even cooler into the hill country with temperatures now in the upper 70s. High temperatures will be creeping upward a bit. I mean, we'll be flirting with 90 degrees even here in San Antonio this upcoming weekend, particularly Sunday. We've got us forecasted for about 88 degrees, the high temperature at that point. Here's a look at the clouds throughout the day today. They were thick earlier this morning in particular, and now we have some showers and storms over the mountains of Mexico. You can see the blow off clouds from those streaming eastward right along Highway 90. Those high clouds will make for a colorful sunset for some folks right along Highway 90 and especially closer to Del Rio. Otherwise, not a lot of activity out there. And the big picture right now shows the action over the upper Midwest and the Northland. That's where things are stirred up and another big system coming into the Pacific Northwest. That's good. They need the moisture out in the Western United States. Around here, this is our wild card. Just south of Mexico here, south of the Yucatan Peninsula, we're talking in the Pacific. This little cluster of storms is likely to come together and become the next tropical cyclone, maybe even the next hurricane. And since it hasn't developed yet, and doesn't even have a center of circulation, it's hard to predict what this not even a storm yet is going to do once it is a storm. However, the wild card with it is, could it throw some moisture our way into next week? There's the possibility of that, but we don't have much confidence in it as of right now. In turn, rain chances, we're talking 10% Saturday, Sunday, a few pop-up showers, and then right now we'll give it a 20% on Tuesday with the potential of that rising a little bit. So humid this evening, not much of a breeze. We'll be in the 70s tomorrow, 66 in the morning, 82 in the afternoon, a mixture of sun and clouds, and the humidity rises a bit into the weekend. That means some morning fog as well. 
I'm team no humidity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really Though you need good. it for rain, so it's, yeah. it's a trade off. All right, let's go to the AT&T Center right now. Greg Simmons joins us live. Anticipation for a new season, Greg. That's right. Opening night, fans are allowed in. In fact, every fan that shows up gets one of these T-shirts, and no, you don't have to sing for it. When we come back, a live preview of opening night for the San Antonio Spurs for the 2021-2022 season, and the Astros get even. Coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to the AT&T Center for the Spurs opening night, a true opening night this year with fans. The only difference for us is due to the COVID protocol, we cannot be down on the court unless we're wearing our face masks. So many questions with so many new faces coming into this season. No superstars on the roster will be the go-to guy in crunch time this year who will take over as a leading scorer in his Greg Popovich final season as a Spurs head coach. But as the NBA celebrates its 75th anniversary, this will be a full 82-game schedule, and to help mold this team and improve their three-point Shooting. The Spurs have brought back a very familiar face, Bryn Forbes, who watched his former teammates in Milwaukee last year receive their championship rings last night. That was crazy, man. It's like it's almost surreal. Um, you know, seeing the ring, seeing them guys get them, the ceremony, all of it was just man, surreal. I couldn't, I can't even put a, a, a feeling on it, but it was just like it didn't seem like like it was actually happening. So that's it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool to be a part of something like that. All right, here is a matchup tonight. Highlights for it tonight on the Night Beat. As part of the NBA celebration of its 75th anniversary this season, the NBA is revealing its list of the top 75 players in the league history. The first 25 were revealed last night and include three former Spurs players and one former assistant coach, four-time NBA scoring champion, the Iceman George Gervin, who suited up for the Spurs from 74 to 85, the Admiral David Robinson, who helped lead the Silver and Black to two NBA championships on the court, another three as a minority owner. Also included was Moses Blone, who played one season in Silver and Black in 94-95 before he passed away in 2000. 15 and Dave Cowens led the Boston Celtics to two NBA titles and was an assistant coach for the Spurs from 94 to 96. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After leading the Dallas Cowboys with that come behind overtime victory against the Patriots in New England, a big award today for Dak Prescott. The Cowboys quarterback has been honored as the NFC's Offensive Player of the Week after throwing the game winning touchdown to CeeDee Lamb to beat the Patriots in New England in overtime 35 29. His 445 yards passing was the most ever allowed by a Bill Belichick coach Patriots team. And the Houston Astros have gotten even with the Boston Red Sox in the American League Championship Series after a tour. Seven run ninth inning rally. Backup catcher Jason Castro got the ball rolling, and Houston takes it nine to two. Game five is tonight. Live from the AT&T Center, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Greg. And we'll be right back after the break. Got some delays on uh, I-37 southbound. This is at uh, Cesar Chavez near the Alamo Dome, but also a crash reported there at 37 in Hackberry. Also seeing some delays on Loop 410 on the north side. Already 13 minutes to get from 281 to I-10 only five minutes in the other direction. So already uh, coming to be a busy commute and we can show you uh, Loop 410 here on our Trans Guide cameras. This is Loop 410 at Callahan Road. Steve and Alicia. For everyone at home, thanks for watching the news at five. World News up next. See you back here at six o'clock.